Welcome back. Today we're going to carry on with decisions and in fact we're going to look a little closer at how we compare numbers and strings. So this will form the basis of those Boolean conditions that we want to consider at the start of our if statement. If you're following along in the textbook, we're now at Big Java Late Objects section 3.2. Overall, the module goals for decisions will be that we'll be able to implement decisions using the if statement, to compare integers, floating point numbers, and strings, and to write statements using the Boolean data type. But today, we're going to focus on how we compare those numbers and strings. If we think back to our description of the if statement, we remember that from our starting point, when we enter the if statement, we have to evaluate a Boolean condition. And if that condition is true, we do one thing. If it's false, we do another. But what makes up the condition? So every if statement has a condition. And this is important because this is the piece that decides if we're following the true branch of our if statement or if we followed the false branch. and this condition often compares two values with an operator. Those values are normally those held in variables and they can be numbers and strings. And so it's important that we understand how we compare those numbers and strings. So we have several relational operators that we can make use of. Uh, the first being we can uh, do a check for equality. And when we check that two things are equal, uh, two numbers are equal, we make use of the equal sign, but we do it uh, twice. So we have equals equals, and that would show that something is equal to another thing. A is equal equal to B. Not equal to, we use an exclamation point and an equal. Less than, as you can see, looks like every t time you've ever checked that a number is less than another in mathematics. If we want to check that something is less than or equal to, we use the less than sign followed by equals. And the same is true for greater than and greater than or equal to. These are fairly straightforward aside from the fact that you should keep track, close track of the equal to and not equal to because they'll trip people up at times. Oftentimes when we're doing a check on numbers, we're checking if numbers are within a range. And I just wanted to point out two areas that can be a little bit confusing in terms of wording. So sometimes we say that a number must be at least 17. This can be confusing for some because there's that word least. Least sounds small and so it sounds like I want to be low, but what I actually want to be is 17 or greater. I want to be at least 17. So in this case, if we have to be at least 17, that means the lowest we can be is 17 and we can be any number higher. X is greater than or equal to 17. Another one that's similar in its confusion is if we say a number is at most five. So if a number is at most five, what we're saying is that it can be five, but that's the highest it can be. It can be at most five. So in this case, we're looking at numbers x less than or equal to five, five or less. So what about equality? Equality seems fairly straightforward, right? We know that for numbers, we can check if two numbers are equal by using that double equal sign. And that's true. Uh, but there's a different form of checking for equality in strings. And that's because when we use the equals equal sign with strings, it's actually checking that the location of two strings is the same. And that's not what we're asking. When we think about equality of strings, we want to know that Angela and Angela have the same letters and characters, the same characters in the same order. And, and to get that uh, understanding of what's held in a string, we actually have to use a string method, and it's the dot equals method. So if we want to check that string one is equal to string two, we use uh, what's seen on the screen, string one dot equals string two. So strings are special, um, and, and that's because, as I mentioned, if we use the equals equal sign, 
it compares the locations of the two strings, not their contents. So just remind yourself that instead, use the strings equals method. String one, dot equals string two. Sometimes what we wish to do is compare the order that strings might be found. Um, in this case, uh, I'm speaking of things more like a dictionary order uh, or the file structure. When we sort files in a folder, the computer has to figure out which should come first. And in fact, it does that using something called lexicographical order. So we can compare the order that strings should come in. Uh, we can compare that a string one might come before string two, that they might be, that they're equal to each other, or that string one should come after string two in lexicographical order. But what is this lexicographical order? I've, I've heard of alphabetical order. What is this big word? And in fact, this is the order that your computer uses to sort things. Um, and it's pretty much the same. A comes before B most of the time, except that all uppercase letters come before lowercase letters. So if we look at the lexicographical ordering, a space comes first, uh, and then zero through nine come before all letters. So we have the space, then we have some symbols, um, and in fact, if you've ever tried to put a, a folder to the top, a file to the top when you're sorting, if you put an underscore before it, it floats it right up there. Um, then the digits zero to nine come before all letters. Then you've got the uppercase letters and finally the lowercase letters. And so what you might be thinking is, when I use my computer operating system and I sort the file folders, I'm pretty sure that an uppercase letter and lowercase letter are intermingled and that it does it more in standard alphabetical order. In fact, what's typically happening is that we push everything to uppercase or all lowercase, sort it then, and then return it as expected. And that's because we humans are expecting it to be in that alphabetical order. So we've been talking about these Boolean ex conditions. And sometimes we want to do a check that a variable is equal to something simple, but other times we want to do some calculation and compare that to what's held in a variable. For instance, if we have a new value and we want to check its equality with the old value plus four. Uh, in this case, the calculation we want to happen first, right? We don't want to check that old, new value and old value are equal and then add four, but we're actually checking that the new value is equal to the old value plus four. And thankfully that is what it does. Um, and that's because comparison operators that equals equals greater than, less than, not equal to, they have lower precedence than arithmetic operators. So the calculations are done before the comparison. So strings have these funny things happening with them but numbers seem so easy, right? Equality, less than, greater than, less than or equal to, they translate to things that we've been doing since junior high, with one exception. So let's check our understanding of what should happen here. We've got a new double variable holding named answer, and answer is going to hold the result of the following. We're gonna take math.pow, which is going to take some value and raise it to a power. And we see that in, in this case, we've, we're going to take math.square root of three and raise it to the second power. So we're going to square it. So that means we're going to take the square root of three and we're going to square it. So I don't know what the square root of three is. I'd use a calculator for that or a computer. But I do know that if I take the square root of something and I square it, I should get back to that same thing. So x, the square root of x squared is x. Let's see what happens here. We have an if statement and we're gonna check a condition. If the answer is equal to three, which I think it should be, then it's gonna print the answer is 3.0. Otherwise, so if it's not 3.0, we're going to get a different result. If I run this, we'll see that, what? The answer is 2.9999996. Now, I know it should be exactly 3.0. Mathematically, the answer is three. 
However, that's not what's returned. And that's because of some floating point fun. Remember, all of these numbers are being held by a computer that is based in binary numbers. And so these floating point numbers have limited precision. And round off errors can lead to some unexpected results. For instance, our example that the square root of three squared is not three, but it's actually 2.9999999996. It's close, but it's not exactly 3.0. And because we've asked the computer to check for equality, it says these aren't the same number. So floating point numbers have this limited precision. And these round off errors do lead to unexpected results. The numbers held behind the scenes are not always what they seem. So how close is close enough? Uh, it's OK to just get close. But is 2.999996 close enough for us? Would 2.999994 be close enough? It's a little bit further away. The answer depends. If you're building something as an engineer, your precision might have to be much tighter than if you're answering questions for a homework assignment and you're requested to get within four decimal places. And so this precision varies based on use. And this is when we insert something called epsilon. We really want to use some small value, and it's defined differently depending on what we're doing, um, to check if floating point values are close enough. Mathematically, we check that two numbers are close enough if we say the absolute value of that difference, x minus y, so we don't care if it's plus or minus, x minus y, uh, is less than some very small number epsilon. And so again, if we're building a bridge, epsilon is going to be very small. Uh, but maybe we're close enough uh, to the number if we're within 0 0.05. It just depends. And so epsilon allows us to change that and change that precision. So in this example, we see that we're using a specific epsilon. And, and typically, based on your application, you might set an epsilon right at the beginning. And that is what's decided as the precision that you want for a specific program. So in this example, we're going to check that we're close enough. We're less the difference between our answer and the answer we're checking against is less than epsilon. And then either print out our answer is approximately 3.0, or if it's not close enough, then we'll say it's not close enough to 3.0. If I run this program with epsilon set to 10 to the minus 14th, then the answer is approximately 3.0. It's less than epsilon away. However, if I change my epsilon to 10 to the minus 16th, and I run it again, what I find is now I'm not close enough. Uh, and so if I decided that I needed that greater precision, then this, this is not close enough. So that's it for comparison of numbers and strings. We'll check back next time and we'll move on to more decisions. And this time we'll look at Boolean variables. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.